a little while ago, I gave you a look at setup, what it's useful for, eh, not even what it's useful for, how to set it up on iOS. Pretty simple, scan a QR code, you're good to go. People have asked since then, what are the apps that I use on setup? Because that's mostly tied to my Mac. And today we're going to talk about that, the apps that are useful on setup. Before we go there, two ways to support the channel. Number one is to go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and support the channel. Number two is to go to curtismchale.ca slash Skillshare, where you can take my Skillshare course on TickTick, watch my upcoming one on time blocking. I'm actually streaming that research most Fridays, so you can see it as it comes. Buckle up, let's talk about setup. These apps are in no particular order, but number one is Get Backup Pro. This is a reliable app to sync folders. You'll see it in some of my Mac screencasts kind of showing up on the top corner where it just says it's syncing some files. I use it to sync my photos between two different hard drives. I use it to sync uh, my Obsidian database between iCloud and Dropbox because I'm still kind of playing in both just for different things for automation. So um, yeah, it's useful for both those things. It's really simple to set up. It's way better than trying to set up some weird cron job with rsync or anything like that. Get back a pro, excellent app. Next up, PDF Pen. Preview is good on macOS for the basics. And, and it keeps coming farther along, but there is really a market for a good PDF app that lets you do lots of stuff. And PDF Pen is the one that I've just used for years now on macOS. I like it, it's easy to use, it's got enough features, it lets me combine PDFs, edit them as I want, highlight them, anything like that. PDF Pen is excellent on setup. Screens. Now I work, mostly work on my iPad, but occasionally I do need Mac OS and you know, some of these apps is what I need it for. And so what I often do is I'll even use screens. Even if I'm sitting at my desk, cause I don't wanna like, you know, kind of move my desk over, change cables, stuff like that. That seems like way too much work. So what I do instead is to just use screens to get into my computer, operate my Mac, and then I'm done, right? Pull down a file with FTP. We'll get to FTP in a bit and I just, it's very easy to use, it's very easy to set up. I can connect anywhere, right? Even if I'm upstairs, you know, I, this morning I needed to do some stuff in the local copy of my own website in Terminal. And so I went into my computer and I opened up Terminal and I used Git to pull the site down and make all the updates I want. And I was in Discord on my Mac downstairs while I was sitting upstairs working on my iPad. And Screens was fast and it was just easy to use. And it always has been, it's been my go-to app for accessing my Mac remotely forever. Downy. When I'm in research mode, I want to download anything, right? Any article I want, any video I want, and I want a copy of it for long term so that I can reference it later. And that all ends up in Dev and Think. But to get there, I use Downy. Downy is just an app that downloads videos really easily. It downloads them automatically off YouTube. You can set whether you, you want it high quality, what type of quality, if you want captions, you don't want captions, all that stuff comes in and it's really easy to use. One step I do need to take, which I will do a screencast for at some point is to automate it so I can drop a link from my iPad into a special spot and then Downy will automatically operate and download it without me having any further intervention. That's coming and it's totally possible because I have done the research on that. I just haven't got around to doing it yet. Forklift, because FTP is barely passable on iOS. And the secure shellfish, and it's okay, but it certainly does not do a great job of downloading like a folder with multiple files and subfolders. Like it just does not work very well. It's okay if I want to zip a file and then pull it down, but it is way slower than using SCP via Blink, which is just complex for those who aren't nerds. Um, and so sometimes when I need to FTP stuff, I just grab forklift on Mac OS and pull stuff down. It's fast, it's reliable, it, that's it. And that's all you want in a tool like this. You just want it to be quick, reliable, not make any errors. In fact, I would go slightly slower, but reliable. That's an even better option than having something that's, oh, it's really fast, but every once in a while I have errors because you got to correct every error that comes through and that's just a waste of my time. Window management on Mac OS is, I find a pain <laughs> compared to iPad OS, but this is where Mosaic steps in for me. It's the window manager I've used for a long time. It just lets me, you know, split windows between left and right or make them full screen. And that's mostly what I do. There's way more options in it. You can say, hey, I've got two apps and like set them up in this way. There's a whole bunch of like things you can customize in this to take it really deep. I really just want left and right usually uh, like I have on my iPad. That's really what I want. I want like, I wish I could just have a split and it would work really well. And it doesn't. It doesn't like natively without something like Mosaic. I like it easy to use. It's sitting there and set up right ready for you to use. 
Lungo is for making sure your Mac doesn't sleep. Even my iPad, so any of my main work machines, my iPad, my Mac, I don't want them to sleep unless I tell them to sleep. And so I use Lungo on Mac OS. Now, I know that there are power settings in your Mac to do this, but Lungo just has more options. So for the times I'm saying, oh, I need it to stay up for a couple hours, but then I actually do want it to sleep, which happens once in a while, I just default to using Lungo. And then when it comes time to make that change, I can make that change easily. Another thing that is annoying on Mac OS is how easy it is for your menu bar icons to just get wildly out of control. I know I've had comments on my videos before when I'm screencasting for Mac OS where they say, hey, Curtis, like your icons are crazy and you have Bartender. That's extra crazy. I agree, it's totally crazy. But Bartender lets you hide or control what icons show up in your menu bar. And it's just a great app. It was probably the one that when Setup first came out, I was like, eh, what does it have? And when they, you know, I think a couple months in, they said, hey, we have Bartender. I was like, done, I'm buying this. Like, there's one or two things, but there wasn't like everything yet. And I just grabbed Bartender because it was excellent. And I love that app. I've used it for a long time. I used it before it was in Setup, and now I use it in Setup every day. Final app I want to talk about is iStat Menus for the nerds because it lets you see basically any stat your computer has, like how your disks are running, how your bandwidth is going up and down, how full is your disk, how much memory, how are each of your cores for your CPU going, right? I'll use this even when I'm screencasting or when I'm live streaming to say like, man, my computer's slow. And I just glanced up and was like, well, all of my cores are running pretty hard to be able to um, stream. So of course, because we're encoding live video. It makes sense. Um, I also use it regularly when I look up my SSD and say, whoa, I've got a lot of footage because when I bought my Mac mini, I thought, oh, I've used 500 gigs forever. That'll be fine. And then I have a two terabyte iCloud account and I have a one terabyte iPad. And so what happens regularly is I've got a bunch of video sitting in there and I don't realize it. And it's filling up my hard drive on my Mac because iCloud is only okay at choosing how you sync folders. It's not great at it. And it doesn't do like sim links to, you know, push a big folder off to some other external drive. You're just kind of stuck with it filling up my hard drive. Next Mac will have a bigger hard drive. Those are the apps I use in Setup. Now, Setup now is a great tool. Like anytime I have some new feature I want to do, some new thing I want to do in Mac OS, the first place I look is Setup. And it almost always has exactly what I need. Some tool that will just work perfectly. I don't have to worry about it. And I just get to keep going. I don't have to pay anything extra as well. That's nice, right? It, you know, little utilities like Lungo or Bartender, they all add up eventually. And having them in Setup just makes it easy for me to go to one spot, it made it easy for me to add my wife's computer to it or add my iPad now to it. And then I can access apps from all of these places and just pay the one fee for it. And it's excellent. And I know that developers in general are very happy with the arrangement they have with Setup, then it works well. And that's good because I want to support developers. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell, and in theory, YouTube lets you know what happens, but you know, it's YouTube and an algorithm, so who knows if they actually do. If you really love the video, two ways to help out. You can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and support the channel, or you can go to Skillshare, not Skillshare, well, Skillshare eventually, but you can go to curtismchale.ca slash Skillshare, where you can take my course on TickTick, or you can watch my course coming up on time blocking. If you're watching for that one, there's a two week free trial when you do this. So just hang on till I announce it. And I'm streaming the research for that course pretty much every Friday where you can come see like what I'm doing, how I use Obsidian, how I use Dev and Think, and just how I'm organizing my course as it goes. Should finish research in the next week or two and then we'll be moving into building the course and you'll get to see a lot of that happen. Have a good one.